Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, we are going to create a different pavilion, such as this image. Go to Tools, Options, Units. It's going to be on meters, three decimal places. Uh, I want to create some uh, curves inside Rhino first. Uh, so I want to go with this option. The second one, the curve, I want to go with this one. Uh, maybe I can start from here. Go to here. So maybe this could be like one side of the pavilion. How about I move this a little bit back, like here. I want to uh, create a different curve. So let's try a second curve. Uh, select the second one and maybe I can move this here. Notice that my project or snap is on. Uh, I'm going to try a different curve. Uh, and I want to move this five meters away and finally I want to create uh, the last curve here. Uh, so these are the four curves. Uh, you can also work with them in the other view. For instance, I can select these two points, type M, and I can move them a bit back. Uh, I can also do it for this one. I'm going to click on this, select the two points here, and move this inside. Uh, this seems about right. If you need to change any of the curves, you can uh, click on that one and uh, move them up and down in this other view. Uh, so whenever you are ready, we are going to actually use uh, loft here. Uh, this second curve looks a little bit low. I want to actually move it up a little bit maybe this one too. The rest seems good. And now I want to select these curves and I want to use loft to actually create a surface. Uh, I can go to shaded. So this is a surface uh, and I want to uh, work on a pattern, on a Voronoi pattern using grasshopper and import it back to Rhino. So I want to go to grasshopper type grasshopper. In the previous video we had an option to populate some points. I'm going to use the same method here. So I want to type populate 2D and it's going to create a set of points for me. Right Now I want to actually uh, extend the points to this whole area. So uh, the easiest way would be to create a rectangle from this corner uh, maybe I should better turn grid snap on to here. Okay, now this curve is going to be the boundary of the points uh, and you see that we actually have an option to assign the region, right? So I want to grab a curve and I want to set one curve, which is this one, and assign it to rectangle. As soon as I do that, the points are going to be uh, all over the place. Right. Uh, you remember that you can change the number. So if I type like 200, by default this value is 100. If I assign this to number, now the points are going to be doubled. You can work with any number. We also have a seed option here, which means if I assign different values, each time it's going to create a different random pattern for us. So now that we have this pattern, I want to show you a different option here which is mesh. Under mesh we have some options for uh, triangulation and I want to use Voronoi. I'm going to bring it here. So far what we have is just a set of points. Uh, I can put a panel here uh, and you see that we have actually like about 121 points. Okay. In the Voronoi node uh, the first input is point so I can connect point to point. As soon as you do that, it's going to create a Voronoi pattern there, right? The second option 
says uh, the radius. I'm going to leave it for now. The third one says boundary. I want the boundary to be the same uh, rectangle as I drew over there. So I want to uh, kind of connect the curve to boundary as well. So now you see that the Voronoi pattern is only limited uh, to this curve. I want to maybe group these objects here. Uh, group this. This is going to be my point. So I'm going to type here uh, for scribble, bring a note, and I want to type random points. Uh, and uh, because I imported this care from Rhino, I would like to internalize the data. So it's going to work if I use it in a different uh, Rhino file. Uh, now I can hide this point. And uh, next thing I want to do is to project uh, this pattern on the surface of the pavilion. So I want to go with project. Uh, what I want to project are the curves here, which is Voronoi curves. You see the output is actually curves. Uh, I can bring a panel here. Uh, so you see that we have like 121 curves here. The reason we have 121 is that we assign that number to the number of points. Okay, so I can assign this curve to curve. And uh, we also need a B rep. That means the surface that we are going to project this onto, right? So that surface is the loft that we created in Rhino. I want to type BREP here. Right click, set one BREP, select that one. Now the surface is also available uh, in my grasshopper. I can internalize the data and I can assign this to my BREP here. As soon as you do that, the pattern is going to be kind of projected onto this surface uh, and you can work with many different options here for instance uh, we can change the number so it's going to make more like a dense set of mesh uh, you can change this seed so it's going to give us different patterns each time Inside Rhino, I want to hide this curve. I don't need to see it anymore. I want to also hide this curve. You can also hide the surface itself um, because now we have it in Grasshopper. We can also hide this and uh, this seems better. I'll go back here. Uh, see what happens when I turn the preview off here. And you see, for instance, if I hide this, you see that the edge is actually not created, so I also need to have these two uh, edges in my grasshopper file. So I want to go here. I want to bring the curves, so I can bring one curve option here. Uh, this time I want to go with set multiple curves, so I can bring both of them at the same time. I'm going to click on this, click on this curve, hold shift select this one and hit a space. So both curves are assigned here now. I can uh, actually hide them in a Rhino. We don't need to see it twice. So I can hide it here. I can hide it here. Uh, let's get back here. Uh, I can also turn off this Voronoi because we see it on the surface. So this seems much better. I can also hide this curve. So this part is actually uh, the whole group responsible for the Voronoi and for the two edges, right? So we got the two edges, as you see if I turn the preview off. We didn't have the edges, I actually got it directly from Rhino. I want to internalize this data as well. Uh, as soon as you internalize the data, it's going to be grayed out here. Uh, that's how you can make sure that your data is internalized or embedded. Uh, I can group these four nodes here, set a group. This group is responsible for my uh, Voronoi pattern, so I want to type a scribble. I want to say this is my Voronoi pattern. Next thing we need to do is actually to thicken these 
curves because they are just like lines here. The easiest way to do that is to create some pipe. So I want to type pipe. Uh, before doing that, let's see what's going on inside this node. I want to bring a panel, assign this here, and you see that this line shows as dashed line. As you remember, that means we have a list inside a list. So I want to flatten this list, and then we're going to have only one list, and it's going to be easier. You're going to avoid uh, repetitive patterns if you flatten the list. Uh, and then for this final uh, option that we have here, which says the pipe, uh, I want to assign the pipe radius. Maybe it's going to be like about three centimeters. So I want to assign three centimeters, which is 0 0.03, because the rhino units are in meters. Uh, the grasshopper values, uh, I need to assign them as in meters too. I want to assign this to my radius. For the last item here, it asks us if you want to cap them or not. Uh, by default, this is set on zero, which means the pipes are not going to be capped on two sides, but I want them to be capped because they are solids, uh, and I want them to be flat, not rounded for the caps. So I want to assign one. I'm going to double click here, type one, assign this value to E, which is for caps. Uh, now that these two are ready, we can just assign this curve to curves here. So that goes there. Uh, so you see that this part is actually now a solid, but the two edges are still uh, just lines. So I want to actually s assign this to curve too. The interesting thing about Grasshopper uh, is that like unlike uh, the current Dynamo, you can connect two items to one input. I want to hold shift, I want to grab this, and I want to also connect the two curves to uh, the curves on the pipe. Uh, so you see now all the objects uh, have a thickness, that's what we wanted. I also want to check what's going on in this panel. Uh, it seems that this is also a list inside the list, so I want to actually flatten uh, so it's going to be easier to later import these objects into Rhino. Uh, you can work with different parameters that we have here, uh, such as the number uh, of the points, so the density of the mesh, uh, the type of the randomized or something. Uh, I want to group these last three items. And I want to bring one scribble. And I want to mention that this is responsible to create pipes. Uh, make sure to save your file. The uh, last thing we need to do is to bake the final object, so it's going to actually be imported into Rhino. So I'm going to right-click, go with Bake, let it be on the default layer for now. I'm going to uh, take care of it later in Rhino. Uh, so now the objects are imported. I can save this file and I can close it. Uh, we can come back here. You see that these uh, elements are actually solid elements in a rhino. I want to turn on everything and I want to see what are the items I don't need here. I don't need this rectangle anymore. I don't need this curve anymore. I can get rid of it. I don't need that curve. I want to leave the rest and uh, it's a good idea to actually create another layer here. I want to change the color. And for the surface, I want to move this surface into the other layer. And now you can assign like a metal material to default layer, which is the actual pipes. I can also rename this layer as pipes. And we can assign uh, more of a transparent material or maybe a plexiglass to layer one, which is for the main surface. I can rename this also as surface. So uh, if you go to rendered, you can see it like this. Uh, we can add a ground surface. I want to go to render, ground plane. I want to assign some material here. I want to create some grass material. This is for the ground. The reason I did it is that I want to actually turn on my lights, my sunlight. And if I want to see the shadows, I need the kind of the ground to be available. 
And next thing I want to do is to assign more of a transparent material to this surface. And as soon as you do that, you can see actually the shadows here. Uh, you can work with the sun settings. Uh, assign location. I want to click here. So it's going to be set to Toronto. Uh, I want to change it to a summer day in June or July. And you can work with different shadows uh, and see which one is going to look the best in your render.